Your Honours, this is case number IT 01480, the prosecutor versus Sefer Halilovich. Merci. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, check whether Mr. Halilovich is in a position to follow the proceedings in a language he understands. Yes, Your Honour, I can follow. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Let uh, me now ask for the appearances, starting with the representative of Mr. Halilovich. Good afternoon, Your Honours. On behalf of Mr. Halilovich, Genal Metro, co-counsel, with the assistance of Mr. Suleiman Imshir Pashic, and I would also like to note for the record and excuse the lead counsel, Mr. Peter Morise, who was unable to attend this hearing today due to prior professional commitments. Merci, Metro, Metro. Thank you, Mr. Metro. I'm now going to turn to the prosecution and ask for the appearances, please. Yes, Mr. President, the appearances for the prosecution are Peter Kramer, myself, uh, Laurel Begg, and Matteo Costi, and our case manager, Lourdes Galicia, is assisting us as well. Merci. Thank you. As announced in the order in scheduling the hearing issued on 25th September 2007, the Appeals Chamber will deliver its judgment today in this case. Following the practice of the International Tribunal, I will not read out the text of the judgment except for the disposition. Instead, I will summarize the issues on appeal and the findings of the Appeals Chamber. This summary is therefore not part of the written judgment, which is the only authoritative account of the Appeals Chamber's rulings and reasons. Copies of the written judgment will be made available to the parties at the conclusion of this hearing. The events underlying this appeal took place in 1993 in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the village of Grabovica, about 30 kilometers north of Mostar. The trial chamber found that 13 persons of Croatian descent taking no active part in hostilities were killed in this village of Grabovica between 8 and 9 September 1993 by troops billeted in the village. There is no disagreement among the parties that these crimes occurred. At the time of these events, Sefer Halilovic was chief of the main staff of the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. According to the prosecution, he was the commander of a military, military operation called Neredva 1993. Or Neredva 93. In its judgment of 16 November 2005, the trial chamber found that the prosecution had not proven beyond res reasonable doubt that Sefer Halilovic was either the de jure or de facto commander of Operation Neredva, nor that he had effective control over the troops who committed the crimes in Grabovica. As a result, the trial chamber acquitted him of the only charge, a charge of murder as violation of the laws or customs of war, punishable under Article 3 and Article 7.3 of the statute. The prosecution appealed the judgment. 
seeking the reversal of the acquittal for the charge of murder with respect to the killings perpetrated in Grabovica. The parties made oral submissions before the appeals chamber in the appeal hearings on 10th and 11th July 2007. The prosecution's appeal consists of four grounds. The first round of appeal, composed of six subgrounds, hinges upon the issue of whether Sefer Halilovic had effective control over the offending troops in Grabovica. The second and third grounds concern the other two requirements of uh, superior responsibility under Article 7.3 of the statute. The knowledge of the criminal conduct of the subordinates and the failure to prevent or punish. The fourth ground of appeal concerns the admission into evidence of the report and proposed testimony of an expert witness, of a military expert witness. Sefer Halilovic has submitted that the entire appeal of the prosecution should be summarily dismissed. He also, alternatively, he requested uh, all uh, grounds to be dismissed. The Appeals Chamber has denied this request as unfounded and has therefore examined the prosecution's appeal on its merits. Let me now briefly summarize the conclusions of the Appeals Chamber with respect to the first round of appeal. The prosecution submits that the trial chamber erred in law and in fact in concluding that the prosecution failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Sefer Halilovic was the superior of the troops who committed the murders in Grabovica and in consequently entering an acquittal. The prosecution requests the appeals chamber to apply the correct legal standards, admit evidence erroneously excluded, and to proceed by making its own findings of fact regarding the existence of a superior subordinate relationship between Sefer Halilovic and the perpetrators. The six subgrounds of appeal advanced under the prosecution's first ground of appeal are deeply intertwined. They all go to the issue of whether Sefer Halilovic was the superior of the troops who committed the crimes in Grabovica. I note that, for reasons explained in the judgment, the appeals chamber has not followed the order proposed by the prosecution in the presentation of its subgrounds, of its six subgrounds. The Appeals Chamber has first addressed subground 6, which seeks the admission into evidence of a statement given by Sefer Halilovic to the prosecution in 1976. 96. The prosecution submits that the trial chamber erred in law in refusing to admit into evidence this uh, statement. The appeals chamber unanimously found that the trial chamber was correct when it rejected the statement. All judges agree Judge Meron and Judge Schomburg on different grounds than the majority, that the trial chamber enforced the procedural safeguards of the rules of procedure and evidence in order to protect 
the due process rights of the accused before the International Tribunal. The Appeals Chamber has then addressed on the merits subground 1, under which the prosecution claims that the trial chamber erred in law in applying the legal standard required to demonstrate effective control. The prosecution submits that the trial chamber erred in law in treating command as a legal requirement of superior responsibility pursuant to Article 7.3 of the Statute. <laughs> 